Welcome to Who Died Today America, your trusted source for honoring those who have bid us farewell. On this 16th of July, we're not just delivering news, but saluting extraordinary lives that have touched ours. Today, we acknowledge recent passings while paying special tribute to notable figures we've lost. Each left an indelible mark on our society and inspired countless others. Join us as we remember their remarkable contributions, reflect on their impact, and celebrate the legacies they've woven into the fabric of our nation. In Who Died Today America, their stories live on. Stay with us as we pay homage to these remarkable lives and their enduring influences. Number 11, Haley Odlozel, a brave and inspiring TikTok star who won hearts globally with her candid battle against stage 3 C ovarian cancer, passed away on July 15, 2023, at the age of 30. The heartbreaking news was delivered by her husband Taylor Odlozel across social media platforms, including Instagram and TikTok. For eight challenging years, Haley fought against the cancer that had metastasized to other parts of her body. Together with her husband, they created a combined TikTok account, which attracted over 2.5 million followers. These followers watched Haley's journey, offering their admiration and empathy. Throughout her painful ordeal, Haley's optimism and tenacity never wavered. Her husband's regular updates, often beginning with the words, Haley is still fighting, served as a testament to her extraordinary spirit. In a deeply moving final post, Taylor shared his intense grief and the relief that Haley was now free from her suffering. Their 16-year-long love story, which includes their four-year-old son, Weston, remains a testament to the enduring power of love and commitment in the face of adversity. Haley celebrated her 30th birthday in February, leaving behind a legacy that outlasts her time in this world. Her courageous battle profoundly touched millions, setting a remarkable example of bravery and resilience. Her spirit will continue to inspire those grappling with similar battles, reminding them of the strength of the human spirit. Number 10. Canadian hockey luminary Billy McMillan, who left an indelible mark on the sport both as a player and coach, has died at the age of 80 on July 15th. Born and raised in Prince Edward Island, Macmillan's extraordinary talent for hockey was apparent early on, paving his path to a career that would span multiple decades and touch countless lives. Making his National Hockey League debut in 1970 with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Macmillan had already etched his name in hockey history, having helped secure a bronze medal at the 1968 Winter Olympics. His playing career, noted for his tenacious defensive play and formidable body checks, included key roles with the Atlanta Flames and New York Islanders. Transitioning seamlessly into coaching, Macmillan began as an assistant coach for the Islanders in 1979, playing a pivotal role in leading the team to its first Stanley Cup victory. Recognizing his innate leadership abilities, he was appointed head coach and general manager of the Colorado Rockies in 1980, remaining with the team through their 1982 relocation and transformation into the New Jersey Devils until his departure in the 1983-84 season. Macmillan's towering contributions to the sport of hockey were recognized when he was inducted into the PEI Sports Hall of Fame in 1985. A testament to his versatile talent and steadfast commitment to the sport, Billy Macmillan's legacy continues to inspire and shape the world of ice hockey. He will be remembered not just for his achievements, but for his enduring influence on a sport he passionately loved. Number 9. Jane Birkin, the transcendent English-French actress and singer, has passed away at the age of 76 on July 16. Famed for her pivotal musical and romantic collaboration with Serge Gainsbourg, her illustrious career spanned over decades, imprinting on multiple artistic spheres. Born on December 14, 1946, Birkin catapulted to international stardom through her debut album Jane Birkin, Serge Gainsbourg, and her performance in the controversial film Je t'aime moi non plus, directed by Gainsbourg. Considered a cornerstone of both British and French cinema, 
Birkin's talent shone in films such as Death on the Nile and Evil Under the Sun. Even after parting ways with Gainsbourg in 1980, she continued to electrify audiences with her acting and singing skills, leaving a lasting impression with her role in the 2016 Academy Award-nominated short film La Femme et le TGV. Beyond her artistic prowess, Birkin's name resonates with luxury, as it graces the Hermes Birkin handbag, an epitome of fashion elegance. An adored figure in France since the 1970s, she was the cherished mother to photographer Kate Barry, actress and singer Charlotte Gainsbourg, and musician Lou Doilon. While her legacy in music and cinema is vast, Birkin's influence transcended the arts. Her life and career stand as a testament to a woman who fearlessly crossed cultural borders and shattered societal norms, embodying an artistic freedom and creativity that was authentically her own. Jane Birkin will be forever remembered for her exceptional talents, her iconic style, and her audacious authenticity that left an indelible mark on the world. Number 8. Tony Butler, a pioneering figure in English radio who is widely credited with inventing the football phone-in, has passed away at the age of 88. Butler's distinctive and forthright style of broadcasting cemented his place as a star of local radio and transformed the face of sports broadcasting in the country. Working at one of the UK's first commercial stations, Birmingham's BRMB, in the 1970s, Butler quickly became a beloved presence. His personality was as larger than life as his influence, with his colleagues and listeners lauding him as a giant in broadcasting. His career spanned decades and platforms, and he became a national figure thanks to his association with comedian Jasper Carrot, who often included Butler in his routine. Butler's career wasn't without controversy, but it was this fearlessness and authenticity that endeared him to his audience. He was unafraid to be himself, an attribute that fellow broadcaster Stuart Linnell recalls as making a huge impact when Butler first appeared on BRMB. This legacy was officially recognized in 2007 when Butler won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Sony Radio Awards. Beyond his revolutionary contributions to broadcasting, Butler was a deeply caring individual who was a friend to all and took care of those around him. He began his career as a trainee reporter in 1951 at the Birmingham Post and Mail newspaper organization, demonstrating a dedication to delivering news and connecting with people that remained a constant throughout his life. He passed away leaving a lasting impact on broadcasting in England and a void in the hearts of his many listeners. Tony Butler will be remembered as a broadcasting titan whose influence continues to reverberate through the industry he helped shape. Number 7. John Nettleton, the veteran actor most renowned for his role as Sir Arnold Robinson in the hit 1980s political satire sitcom Yes Minister and its sequel Yes Prime Minister, passed away at the age of 94, as confirmed by his representatives. Nettleton, born in London on February 5, 1929, brought to life a character filled with political scheming, rivalries and conspiracies serving as a master manipulator and mentor to Sir Humphrey Appleby's character. His contribution to British comedy spanned seven decades, with numerous television roles including another political character as a conservative MP in The New Statesman. Beyond political satires, Nettleton's diverse career included roles in popular shows such as Z Cars, Walk a Crooked Mile, Midsummer Murders, Foyle's War, Casualty, Rumpole of the Bailey, and Doctor Who. Nettleton was also known to younger audiences through his readings of historical stories on Blue Peter. His work extended to the big screen with performances in films like A Man for All Seasons, East of Ipswich, and a 2005 adaptation of Oliver Twist. His last on-screen appearance was in the 2008 comedy drama Kingdom alongside Stephen Fry. Off-screen, Nettleton was a respected figure in theatre, having been one of the earliest members of the Royal Shakespeare Company. He performed in many stage productions, including the National Theatre's first production of Alan Bennett's stage adaptation of The Wind in the Willows. Nettleton leaves behind a rich legacy, not only in the world of television and film, but also in the theatre, embodying the depth and breadth of an actor's potential. 
He is survived by his wife, Deirdre, three children, and five grandchildren. The acting world mourns the loss of such a versatile and enduring performer. Number six, Margia Dean, the seasoned actress remembered for her roles in the films The Quatermass Experiment and The Big Show, passed away on June 23, 2023, at her home in Rancho Cucamonga, California. She was 101 years old. Born into Greek royalty, Dean's trajectory into acting began in her childhood in California, with her gracing the stage in various productions. Her beauty and charm led her to the modeling world, where she achieved recognition as a runner-up for Miss America in 1939. Her film debut in Casanova in Burlesque in 1944 marked the beginning of a prolific career, primarily within the realm of B-movies. Dean's name is cemented in horror film history through her role in The Quatermass Experiment, the inaugural installment in the Hammer Horror Film series, which cultivated a cult following. In 1958, she appeared alongside a young Clint Eastwood in the Western Ambush at Timuron Pass, and later shared the screen with Esther Williams and Robert Vaughan in the 1961 circus film The Big Show. Over the course of her career, Dean starred in 16 films for Lippert Pictures, earning her the title of the Queen of Lippert. These films encompassed a wide array of genres, from the drama Grand Canyon to the western I shot Jesse James to the science fiction flick Superman and the Mole Men. Dean's last on-screen appearance was in 1964's Morrow Witch Doctor. After retiring from acting, Dean wore many hats, exploring careers in real estate, costume design, and interior decoration. Marja Dean's diverse and long-lasting career across multiple facets of the entertainment industry will always be remembered. Number 5. Manny Koto, a celebrated screenwriter, director, and producer revered for his work on fan-favorite shows like American Horror Story, Star Trek Enterprise 24, and Dexter, passed away on July 9, 2023, at the age of 62. Koto succumbed to pancreatic cancer in Pasadena, California. Born in Havana, Cuba, Koto demonstrated a passion for storytelling early on. Fascinated by Star Trek, he engaged in making Super 8 MM movies during his childhood. After gaining experience in commercials and earning his credentials from the American Film Institute, Koto stepped into the world of television. His early work included directing and writing an episode of Tales from the Crypt, the reboot of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and co-writing an episode of The Outer Limits. The defining moment in Koto's career arrived in 2003 when he joined the crew of Star Trek Enterprise in its third season. His skillful writing in episodes like Chosen Realm and Azati Prime earned him recognition, and by the fourth season, he ascended to the role of executive producer alongside show creators Rick Berman and Brannon Braga. For a lifelong Trekkie like Koto, his contribution to re-energizing the series was the fulfillment of a dream. After Star Trek Enterprise, Koto enjoyed a sequence of high-profile roles. He worked as a writer and executive producer on the final four seasons of the hit show, 24, then penned and produced the riveting serial killer drama, Dexter, for three seasons. He also wrote numerous episodes for the American Horror Story anthologies. His career, brimming with success, only slowed down upon his cancer diagnosis in 2022. Koto's exceptional writing skills earned him two Emmy nominations, with a win for 24 and four nominations for the Writers Guild of America Awards. Through his influential work, Manny Koto left an indelible mark on the television landscape, etching his name among the greats of genre television storytelling. Number 4 veteran ventriloquist and voice actor Jimmy Weldon, celebrated for giving life to Hanna-Barbera's cartoon duck, Yaki Doodle, and his endearing puppet character, Webster Webfoot, passed away on July 6, 2023. He died in Paso Robles, California at the age of 99. Born in Dale, Texas, Weldon wore many hats during his lifetime. 
As a young man, he served in Europe during World War II and was part of the company that liberated the Buchenwald concentration camp in April 1945. After the war, Weldon returned to Texas and began his radio career as an announcer at KWCO. Here he developed the voice of Webster Webfoot, a charming duck character that soon won the hearts of listeners. Following his tenure at KWCO, Weldon carried the character of Webster Webfoot to television, where it became a puppet on The Webster Webfoot Show in 1950. This show was broadcast by local station WFAA. The character eventually made its way to California and caught the attention of Ralph Edwards, the producer of Truth or Consequences. Edwards created Funny Boners, a children's version of his show, with Weldon and Webster as hosts. Due to the popularity of Weldon's characters, he began to receive offers for voice work. His most recognizable role was with Hanna-Barbera, where he voiced Yaki Doodle, a small duck character partially modeled after Webster Webfoot. He also lent his voice to Solomon Grundy on Challenge of the Super Friends and contributed to shows such as Popeye and Son and Tom and Jerry Kids Show. Beyond his work as a voice actor, Weldon had a flourishing live-action acting career, with appearances in popular shows like Dallas, Dragnet, The Waltons, and Different Strokes. Jimmy Weldon leaves behind a legacy of memorable characters and performances, his contribution to children's entertainment both on radio and television marking him as a distinct talent in the industry. Number 3. Dakota Fred Hurt, a seasoned gold prospector known for his appearances on the Discovery Channel reality series Gold Rush and its subsequent spin-offs, passed away on July 11, 2023, at the age of 80. His battle with brain cancer came to an end in the midst of the Alaskan wilderness he loved so deeply. Hurt initially emerged on Gold Rush during its inaugural 2010 season as a foil to other prospectors, taking over a claim in Porcupine Creek, Alaska. The dramatic takeover was in reality a peaceful transaction, but was played up for the reality TV narrative. Hurt's passion for prospecting led him to remain on Gold Rush for four seasons, moving his efforts to Alaska's Cahoon. Departing Gold Rush to work on a planned show called All That Glitters, Hurt instead found a new prospecting home in 2018 with the spin-off series Gold Rush Whitewater, starring alongside his son, Dustin. The series focused on their attempts to strike gold in Hainesboro, Alaska, specifically targeting the treacherous Whitewater Creeks and cascading waterfalls. Hurt's love for prospecting kept him on the show until his final days, with the most recent season concluding just a month before his passing. In addition to Gold Rush Whitewater, Hurt made appearances on Gold Rush South America and Gold Rush The Legend of Porcupine Creek. Before dedicating his life to prospecting, he worked in construction and commercial diving. In memory of Hurt's vibrant life and his tenacity as a prospector, his family has requested donations be made to the Mike Rowe Works Foundation, reinforcing his lifelong dedication to blue-collar professions. Dakota Fred Hurt's enduring spirit and love for prospecting will remain a vital part of his legacy. Cemented in the annals of reality television and the gold streaked creeks of Alaska. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. On July 16th, the world bid farewell to an enduring icon of the New York art scene, Bridget Berlin, at the age of 80. The cause of death was cardiac arrest due to a pulmonary embolism. Known to many as one of Andy Warhol's closest confidants, and a vibrant figure in the New York art world of the 1960s and 70s, Berlin defied the conventional norms of her wealthy upbringing, instead immersing herself in the enthralling turmoil of the New York underground art scene. Born to the prominent Berlin family on September 6, 1939, Berlin, or Bridget Polk, a moniker derived from her affinity for giving amphetamine pokes, made her mark as a unique blend of rebelliousness and flamboyance. Her magnetic personality left an indelible imprint on the people and the culture of the era. According to Danny Fields, a member of Warhol's inner circle, Berlin was instrumental in the genesis of the art of the 60s. 
She was not only a fixture in Warhol's films, but also recorded for the Velvet Underground. Her artistic aptitude was recognized and admired by stalwarts such as Robert Rauschenberg, Jasper Johns, John Chamberlain, and Larry Rivers. Berlin's diverse and influential legacy comprises a series of recorded telephone conversations, Polaroid snapshots of New York's bohemian demimonde, and unconventional breast prints created by painting her breasts and pressing them onto paper. In her later years, Berlin sought a more serene life, focusing on the serious exhibition of her photographs and crafting intricate needlepoint pillows mirroring tabloid front pages. Her surviving brother Richard fondly remembered Berlin, stating, She was complicated, but she was a hell of a lot of fun. As tributes pour in, it's clear that Bridget Berlin's audacious spirit and her contributions to the world of art will continue to resonate and inspire future generations. Number one, renowned rapper and musical maverick Biz Markey, best remembered for his chart-topping hit, Just a Friend, passed away on July 16, 2021, at 57 years old. He succumbed to complications from diabetes, surrounded by his loved ones and caring medical staff in a Baltimore hospital. Born in Harlem, Biz Markey christened Marcel Theo Hall, catapulted to international fame in 1989 with his platinum single, Just a Friend. The song landed on top 40 charts worldwide, solidifying Biz Markey's place in the annals of music history. His career trajectory after the hit was nothing short of meteoric, as he ventured into various fields including acting, comedy, DJing, and music production, leaving an enduring impact on the entertainment industry. Beyond his prodigious artistic talent, Biz was beloved for his lively personality and infectious sense of humor. These attributes won him a special place in the hearts of fans and industry colleagues alike. His expansive creative contribution, spanning over three decades, painted a rich legacy of artistry that remains unparalleled. Biz Markey's battle with diabetes became public in the summer of 2020 when he was hospitalized. Amid swirling rumors and concerns about his health, Biz's tenacity was a beacon of inspiration, matched only by the unwavering support and positivity of his loved ones. He leaves behind his wife, Tara Hall, family members and close friends who join his vast fan base in mourning his loss and celebrating his extraordinary life. The legacy of Biz Markey will continue to inspire and mold the future of the music industry and beyond, a testament to a life well lived and a career well played. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.